Manchester United, one of the world's most iconic sports brands, could finally be poised for a sale. That's after the Qatari bid for the English football club was reportedly granted exclusivity, according to sources familiar with the matter. A consortium led by Qatar's Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani is thought to have offered more than $6 billion for total control of United. The exclusivity would mean that, for a time, the club won't negotiate with any other bidder. United are currently controlled by the American Glazer family, whose tenure in charge has seen fan protests since they purchased it in a leveraged buyout in 2005. A source told Reuters the Glazers would be cashing out as part of the deal. Finance expert Neil Joyce. The Qatar bid looks cleaner on many, many levels to fans, to the people that work at the club as well, but also, I, I guess, ultimately, they've hit a, a point in terms of their bid that's got the Glazers to, to move forward in this direction. The Reuters sources say the Qatari offer is viewed more favourably than a rival bid from British billionaire Jim Ratcliffe, founder of chemicals producer Ineos. Ratcliffe's offer envisions that the Glazers would keep some interest in Manchester United. Reuters could not immediately learn how long an exclusivity period for Sheikh Jassim would last. The sources also cautioned that a new bid from Ratcliffe could still derail the process. However, the development represents a major milestone. Shares of the club, listed in New York, jumped as much as 15% on the news. As a business, Manchester United is considered to have huge potential, in particular thanks to its fan base of over 650 million worldwide. But analysts have also cautioned over the costs of ownership after any purchase. There needs to be a level of investment in Manchester United to capitalise onto that global opportunity, along with investments on the pitch, infrastructure, while some fans would see rich new Qatari owners as the quickest way to improve the team's waning fortunes on the pitch, others have expressed concern about Qatar's human rights record. If the deal does go through, however, it would be one of the biggest ever in sport. Email exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate, but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. The UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colony. and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one, the Kohinoor and the colonial loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.